Do you feel you waste time working with data in Excel trying to find a specific cell just so you can make some change to it? In this video, I'm going to show you how to organize data with Excel tables and then automate working with that data with Excel VBA. These are the exact techniques that my company uses to save our customers thousands of hours. So let's get into it. Let's get Excel working for you rather than the other way around. Hi everybody, it's Chris here. I hope you're enjoying this video. Just to let you know, I've got an Excel cheat sheet PDF ready for you to download. It's absolutely free. The link is in the video description below. If you do download it, you will go on our marketing mailing list, but it shows you exactly what I'm using in Excel to save myself hours using Excel tables and a host of other techniques. The video, the link's in the video description below. It's there for you. Okay, so we've just got some basic data in Excel. How can we save time by applying a table to this data? Select the data we want to turn into a table, Control Shift right, Control Shift down on the Windows PC, then up to the Home tab and over to Format as Table. And we've got all of these formatting options, but I like the simplest one. And this is the first benefit of tables. It's a quick way to get a simple and effective formatting look. So I've selected that formatting. Then I get this dialog box. I'm just checking the range I'm turning into a table. My table does have headers, so I can hit OK and suddenly we have a table here. Now, for some reason, when you create a table, it will change the column widths. So I'm gonna go ahead, Alt H O W here on the Windows PC, then hitting the F4 key. I'm just gonna bring those column widths back into line. So the other thing I like to do when creating a table is I do use a custom color, if you like, on the header row. I usually go for a dark color with the light text there. And this for me is a nice, easy, professional look. So the next benefit of using tables is easy data expansion. We're going to see if you apply formulae, this is perfect for you when working with ranges. Some of that data might get lost. It's not going to happen with Excel tables. So let's suppose I want to add another walk for my dog walking business. You can see I can just put the data in automatically. This table expands. Alternatively, I can use this drag handle at the bottom to add additional data to the table. And you can see the formatting is automat automatically brought down and any data validation you have, I've got a simple drop down menu here, is brought down too. So this has benefits with formula building. It's gonna guarantee all of your data is included in a formula. So let's suppose I want to sum up total fees here. So I've just started the sum form. Formula. I'm going to go ahead and select the whole column. So you don't just want to select to the end of the data, select the whole column of the table. And you can see the table notation here. Now, this is a little bit awkward to work with, but it's probably worth it because it gives us this dynamic functionality much easier to get formulae working consistently with data. And I can hit enter here. My formula is in and I can prove uh, that it's working by typing some additional values here in at the bottom, add an additional row and I can put the additional input there and you can see the formula updating. So we can see how to apply a formula to a table. Make sure you name your table. So click in the table, we've got table design here and I'm going to go ahead and call my table table dog data. So my naming convention is I always say table at the beginning, hit enter to make sure that name goes in and just go ahead into the name manager and check that your table name appears in the name manager. One final tip for working with Excel tables is you have an option here to convert back to a range. So if you like that formatting, you want to get that alternate row formatting quickly, but retain a range for whatever reason, you can convert back to a range and suddenly our table's gone, but you've retained that nice formatting. So we have a table in the file. Now, how can we automate working with that table using Excel's programming language, Excel VBA? Now, if you've never used VBA before, I've put our best absolute beginner video in the video description below. You might wanna check that one out first. Let's get into it. So how do we even get Excel VBA to see the table that we've just created in our spreadsheet? So I just want to count the rows in the table. Firstly, we need to reference the table. So I'm gonna say with sheets, 
and then data in the speech marks, close the bracket and then dot. Now we need something that's unusual if you're not used to working with tables in Excel VBA, which is list objects. List objects, this is how we reference a table. List rows is coming in a second too. Then we need the name of the table that we put in in the last part is table dog data. And then we're gonna close this with statement using end with. Now something simple, let's count the rows to see if this reference is gonna work or not. So I'm gonna now say message box dot list rows dot count. And we do need this dot here. This dot is gonna connect all of the syntax together. So what are we expecting to happen? Hopefully a message box is gonna flash up. It's gonna show us the number of rows in this table, uh, which is 10. So I'm gonna click into this routine. I can see the cursor flashing there. Click play at the top of the VBA editor and it does seem to have worked. I've got the number of 10 flashing up here. So let's take advantage of the dynamic quality of tables. Let's add some more data, run the routine again. What are we expecting? Well, there's now 11 rows in this data. What a typical mistake you might make at this point. Well, you might misspell the name of the table. What error would you get in that case? You'll get the subscript out of range error. So Excel can't find the object that you're pointing it to because we've spelt it wrong in the VBA editor. This is the way I actually reference tables on my projects. I just use the index number. If you've only got one table on the sheet, it's gonna be the first table, so index number one. So we can go ahead and hit play. We're gonna get the same results here. So there's the basics of working with tables in Excel VBA. There's so much exciting stuff you can do now. I've included some more routines here. So click into this routine if we wanted to add a row to a table, dot list rows, dot add. I'm gonna play this one and I can see rows coming in at the bottom of the table. What about adding data to the table? What We've got this concept of data body range. What's the data body range? Well, it's the range of the table that's below the headers above any totals you have at the bottom. So for us, it will be this range here. And then within the data body range, you can say dot cells, a typical cell referencing technique in Excel VBA, and then two numbers. The first number is the number of rows to move down. The second number is the number of columns to move across. So stop the video. Where is the text here going to appear in the table? Well, I'm gonna guess four rows down, one, two, three, four, and then three columns across. So I'm gonna hit play and I can see here appearing in the table there. We've got some data in the table. Suppose we wanted to delete this row. We can do that too using Excel VBA. And let's suppose we want to delete the third row. I can just change this number here from one to three, referencing the third row in the table. And I can see that table disappearing. If you want to delete all of the data in the table, once again, we need to reference data body range. And then this line of code guards against a situation where there's no data body range. Yes, if there's no data in your table and you, you try to delete it, that's going to create an error. So I recommend putting in this line of code, counting the rows first to check there are some rows, there is a data body range. And if you do that, you can then use this macro to delete all the data in the table. So we're just feeling the power of Excel VBA, working with Excel tables to save you hours managing data in Excel. But let's suppose you wanted to do a kind of real world task. Let's suppose for one of the dogs, Kuda, you needed to change the walk time. So all of her walk times, they all started at 10 o'clock. So you need to go through the data set and do that potentially manual job that would just be a nightmare. Well, the good news is with Excel VBA, we can do it at the click of a button. Now we're gonna use a loop to do this task. If you've never used Excel VBA loops before, I've put our beginner video in the video description below. Let's get into it. Okay, so what we're looking to do is to loop through each row in the table. Then if a particular row contains a dog name, we want to do something to that row. So conceptually, that's what we're looking to do. How can we translate that into Excel VBA? Well, I've got this routine started. So firstly, we need to reference the first column in the table. So how to go about doing that? Well, we can use the syntax we've used previously, the name of the sheet, followed by that list objects concept 
to reference the table. There's only one table on the sheet, so I can use the index number. But how would we reference the column? We've got list objects and list rows, yes. We've also got list columns, and we're interested in the first column in the table, and then critically, we need that data body range. That data body range, of course, is going to allow us to loop through this range specifically. So it's the table without the header and any totals you might have at the bottom. So let's just go ahead and say here message box dog cell. I'm going to say dog cell dot address. So what's going to happen here? Well, hopefully I'm going to comment out this line of code too. Hopefully this is going to show us the address of each cell in the first column. And I'm just hitting enter here, looping through these message boxes. So when we get to C19, hopefully this macro is gonna end, there's C19. So I'm just proving to myself, we're looping through each cell in the first column of the table. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, delete this testing code. I'm gonna delete the inverted comma, bring back this code. So I've said dog cell dot offset zero one. So what does that mean? We're gonna start in the dog cell which is the first column of the table. We're going to move across one column. That's dot offset zero one. With offset, the first number is the number of rows to move down. The second number, the number of columns to move across. So if the value in that column is our target value, we're looking for CUDA, then we want to do something. What do we want to do? We want to change the value four columns away. Remember, we want to change that walk start time. So how to do that? Well, let's go ahead and recycle some code here and then just change the value. So what value would we need to change? We need to move across four columns rather than a single column. And then we want to input that new dog walk time, which is 10. Hmm. So hopefully this is going to work. How to test it? I'm going to hit the F8 key. You can also go to debug and step into I'm just going to keep an eye on what's going on as we're working through the table. So the first row in the table does contain our target dog name. So what are we expecting to happen? The value in the highlighted cell should tick over, should change the 10 there. I'm going to go ahead, play the routine now, and I can see all of CUDA's walks now starting at 10 o'clock. So this is how to save hours of time using VBA in combination with Excel tables. Now I love Excel VBA. It's given me so many punch the air moments over the years. I hope you've felt a few of those punch the air moments yourself today. But the truth is using Excel tables and VBA is just one way to improve your Excel productivity. I've got 26 more in the video, links below and on the screen now.